What is going on everyone? Adam Gelman here. I wanted to make another video because we have officially entered the post rock sale era. And you know, it's been a crazy couple of weeks because we've had, first we had the record sale of the rocks, 2022 prison black 101 sell for $126,000. Then we had the Andre, the giant um, black one of one from 2022 sell for $8,400. And now we are into the era where every other potential card is going to come to market. And I wanted to take some time quickly because it seems like we are about to get a deluge of insane wrestling centerpieces from Prism and other sets that are going to hit the market as a result of this big sale. All of them at once, it seems, which is even crazier. But I wanted to spend some time walking through this because... I'm not sure if people really understand kind of what's about to happen. So let's let's first let's take a step back because this isn't the first unicorn sale that has happened in a market. And if you go back to the beginning of the boom, even the beginning of the upswing that led to the boom, there were a number of these big sales that went down in the NBA, in F1, in other places that really set a tone for a market. There are others that sold incredibly high, but never really had much impact on the market. So we've got to really have a tempered expectation that it could be a big impact to some cards. It could be less of an impact to other cards. We're not seeing an impact to the wax. Um, I know Paul and Tony on their monthly recap just covered a considerable amount of ground with what this sale means to the overall market. I generally agree with about everything they said, but I think what we're about to see is some crazy action in the market that has rarely happened in wrestling and really didn't happen in this sort of way, even when Prism was released in 2022. So going back to like when the Giannis logo man in the NBA, Giannis Antetokounmpo um, had a logo man rookie that sold for over a million dollars. It was like a, 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 Oh shit moment that happened. And it led to sort of this, increase in you know collection defining cards we then had a Luka Doncic logo man uh, that sold for 4.2 million dollars that happened all within the same sort of general time frame the funny thing is like those cards actually did have a, a pretty big impact on the high-end NBA market we started to see things start to creep up as a result of these sales even though these specific cards were among the best that you can have in the NBA, there were other cards that started to creep up around this time. And then the boom sort of just set everything uh, ablaze with rocket fuel. And so I think there may have been sort of a victim of circumstance in the fact that maybe these cards wouldn't have had the impact that they had had if the boom never happened, if COVID never happened, all these other things. So like there is a lot of uh, in, you know, variables in these equations that, are really tough to solve for. Then you have cards like the Michael Jordan um, PSA 10 that sold for $775,000 right at the height of the boom. They've come all the way back down to like 126,000, 150,000. So like you've seen how some of these sales can have zero impact as well. Um, but one thing is for certain is that when one of these major cards sell, all of the people who are waiting in line to sell theirs just jump into overdrive and list right away. They want to capitalize on the attention. They want to capitalize on everybody sort of focusing in on a very specific element of the market. And they want to get out from under this big card that is now set records across a number of different areas. So just in the next couple of weeks, here is what is currently on the auction block as we are recording and some that are still yet to be sort of launched, but have been notified. So we know that the black one of one of Brett, the Hitman Hart, the black one of one from 2022 of Kevin Nash, the black one of one from 2022 of Brock Lesnar, the black one of one uh, from 2022 of Mick Foley are all four at going to be at golden auctions running generally at the same time um we also know that the psa 10 2022 gold rock one of 10 so the first one stamped in that sort of run uh has a 
an amazing chance to do some really big money, regardless of what The Rock is going to what's what's going to sell for, because it's one of the only PSA tens um, out there. There's only three of them. Drake has one. This is the other one. And there's another one out there. Um, of the three PSA tens, this is number one, and then for whatever reason, that always carries a premium. But that's going to go to auction too. It was listed at three thirty thousand dollars on eBay for a couple of days before The Rock sold. And was taken down. Now we know that it's gone. It's gone to gold, and it will be auctioned off. So the PSA eight, which is a lesser desirable grade by a significant margin, sold for eleven thousand four hundred dollars. <throat> so the understanding that a PSA ten and the first one stamp, um, with that premium that goes along with it, there could be some impact there because it's literally the junior version of the black, right? So if the black sells at one hundred twenty six k. This one isn't going to sell for anywhere near that, but it could sell for, you know, 20 to $30,000. And I think that was going to happen regardless of what happened with the rocks one one So I don't want to make it seem like the gold is going to sell for a ton more money because the black did. It was already going to sell for a ton of money. We know what the PSA sold for, uh, the PSA eight sold for. So we can only imagine what the PSA 10 is going to sell for. The other four cards, which are, you know, Mick Foley, Bret Hart, Brock Lesnar and Kevin Nash, like those are lesser sort of tier guys, right? They're like Bret Hart is a tremendous superstar, one of the greatest of all time, probably the greatest worker of all time uh, outside of his brother. So like Bret Hart um, sold originally on Facebook for a significant sum of money, like the week Prism release. It was a private sale. It was done in a Facebook group and the money was exorbitant. So I can imagine why this one is coming to market. Um, it's possible that it sells for qu quite a bit of money. I don't know if it's going to get anywhere close to any records or anything like that. And, and rock withstanding, like it, but th if this one doesn't break um, some of those ceilings, right? The, the $5,000 ceiling, the $10,000 ceiling, like that should be a very telling um, warning or encouragement for other people who are going to be bringing their cards to the market. The thing that I think is really key, and Paul talked a lot about this, is that for a lot of this reason, there probably won't be much impact. A lot of these cards would be valuable, even if The Rock didn't sell. They, they're capitalizing on a attention span that tends to be very small. And I think that's really the key here, is that we have to differentiate between the actual value of this card, regardless of what happened with the rock, and then any additional value that may be added. So if Bret Hart goes up for auction and sells for $30,000, like I think that's significantly above where I expect it to sell. But if it goes up for auction and sells for $5,000, like that's also a significant dip from where I expect it to sell. So like it should fall in a value spectrum regardless of where where the rock ends it's 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 definitely a card that a lot of people are going to be watching brock lesnar is definitely a card that a lot of people are going to be watching N doesn't matter what else is sold like if that card goes on the market at any time in the last year like it's going to get attention because it's the 101 prism black and prism is a brand that drives a lot of interest not just among the pc collectors who are chasing their rainbows but among in, like investors, general wrestling collectors, anything, because Bret Hart is a cornerstone of wrestling. Same with Brock Lesnar, he's a cornerstone of wrestling. They don't have the collection appeal of a Rock or a Hulk Hogan or an Undertaker or Stone Cold Steve Austin, but they're definitely gigantic names in the industry. Now, we also know that there is a one of one Black Rock 2023 version that is going to be coming to auction. It's either going to be auctioned on Golden or PWCC or eBay. We're not sure yet. The indications from the post is that it's going to Golden. But that card is one that, again, would have significant value. It already sold for $10,000 on eBay. Completed sale, canceled, sent back, whatever. But like we know that's at least a $10,000 card, regardless of what happened with The Rock. So again, we have to separate the value that these cards would have just on a normal market situation and then above and below as a result of the sale that's happening with the rock. So I keep mentioning that because 
it's such a key factor here. Like, how do you judge a card's value as it stands? How do you judge a card's value as according to other comparative sales? And then does that comparative sale and the performance go above or below what the expectations are for a card of that standard? And I think it's a, it's a really, really speculative discussion, but it's one that's really fun to have, right? Like we all enjoy talking about a lot of these things. And I think that there are, there's definitely like a hierarchy here of, of superstar quality. Um, and there's also a hierarchy of the cards themselves. So like, think about this from the perspective of like, we know that the black one-on-one prisms are some of the most valuable cards that have ever been made. We also know that the golds are probably the junior version of that. For a lot of the different top tier guys, they have sold for significant margins above and beyond where a card out of 10 should sell. We also know that super fractors are big deals. We know that all of these other things are, are really sort of contributing to the overall status of the market. However, this market is still very underdeveloped. So like when you have a, a ton of NBA, Major League Baseball, NFL, F1, like those cards are more robust and more mature. There's more people involved. There's more money to go around. So when you put five of these on the auction block at once, the amount of bidder money that's a, that's able to be sort of pooled together among those five cards is probably less than any of these other sports, even UFC. So like, I would even say that the, the UFC market has more money in it. The, the, the F1 market definitely has more money in it. And like all of these other ones have more people in it as well. So wrestling is a smaller market. It's a smaller um, range of bidders. There are bidders that will spend, as we've seen. There was at least two that went up on the rock. There's a, there's a number of bidders that are willing to spend four, high, five, high four figures, five figures on a wrestling card. It's just, are they all going to dive in at once? And that's really where I don't know if this is the best strategy. So if you're holding one of these cards, and I am, I am holding the one of one Becky Lynch 2022 prism it's not going up for sale that's part of my you know collection centerpiece like I, that's not going up for sale but if i am holding a card like that and i'm seeing the action that's going down i am not sending my card to auction right now there are just too many out there for me to feel confident that there's enough bidders to go around so i think that that's really the key here and i know and I, again i want to say that tony and paul on their show yesterday did a really good job of sort of explaining how um, you know one sale should not be thought to impact all other sales. I think in the same token, there are going to be impact for more than one of these cards being on the market at once. So I think like some of the PC collectors who have been hunting for their grails and prism are could end up getting a really, really good deal on these cards. They could just be oversaturated because too many people want to take advantage of this, this sale. But again, this always happens. When the Mickey Mantle stole for what it did, a bunch of those Mickey Mantle cards and other Mickey Mantle cards hit the market almost immediately after. When the Luka Doncic logo man sold, like there were a, a lot of other sales that were put onto the market to capitalize on that you know, sort of situation. So this happens every single time. The difference is those markets tend to be more developed. And when the Lewis Hamilton rookie card sold for 900 grand, you know, and, you know, all of a sudden, all of these, you know, F1 sales started to creep up. Like Lewis Hamilton specifically is now one of the most valuable personas in sports cards. Like it's a result of that sale sort of creeping into other things. And like, same thing with like Conor McGregor and his gold selling for what it did in prison when that was released. It has since come down. A lot of UFC has come down. A lot of F1 has come down. But some of those other cards are still very valuable regardless. And so there's there's varying levels of impact that take place here. And it's really key for us as a market to understand how all of these things are interconnected. Because for wrestling cards, that really hasn't been established yet. For the NBA, for MLB, for NFL, soccer, all of those things have historical precedent wrestling does not this was a unicorn record sale but it's not a market defining sale as we've seen andre the giant didn't just sell for 30 grand he sold for 8400 that's about i think that's about where he sold 
I think Paul mentioned that it sold for 15 grand the first time around. I don't know if I remember it that way, but that's definitely possible. So, I mean, like, I think we're seeing that that card specifically didn't see any impact. We're going to see if these other cards have any impact. My main focus as a collector of wrestling cards and somebody who enjoys seeing wrestling cards do well, seeing this hobby grow and all these other things, my top two cards to watch in this entire thing are the gold, which I think, again, was significantly valuable well before any of this other stuff came to market. And that black one of one from 2023, which already sold for 10 grand. I think those are the two cards that I'm most interested to see, you know, sort of end, not just because of what happened with the first one of one black, but just because they were immensely valuable cards regardless. So I'm definitely curious to see if there is any impact. I don't know if there will be, but it'll be fun to watch those. Those other four cards, plus all of the other ones that are definitely going to come out of the woodwork, like, that's just a fun experience to see if there is any real sort of growth that is happening on the prices of those cards. So really amazing time to be a wrestling collector, a lot of attention, a lot of people coming back again, when prism started, we had a bunch of people sort of flood the market and overheat it with the wax price of the way it was. Now we're seeing that, you know, why those people were probably ready to invest the way that they were. We're starting to see, that there is the potential of a six-figure card being in those boxes when the initial price tag was where it was. We're also seeing that there are many five-figure cards in the current prison boxes as well as the past ones that have since been opened, right? So you saw that the Ultimate Warrior sold for $15,000. I think if that gets put on the market again, that one sells for a significant amount of money again. Like there, Like, it didn't take the rock to make prism a valuable brand um the the lesser stuff in prism which was overheated to the vast degree which i've said since the the beginning the 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 rare and desirable stuff in prism is something that drives a considerable amount of interest above and beyond just wrestling collectors and that's why people were so eager to get in on those boxes when they were um but you know as we saw that crash the bulk sort of like high numbered unnumbered stuff from prism absolutely tank but there's a lot of valuable cards in prism like four and five figure cards in prism we've seen 10 probably five figure sales happen even since that crash has happened so some of them have been private but a lot of those cards are selling for huge money and the rock especially is the the crown jewel of that set no pun intended but like we're we're in a really fun time here like i i i not saying go out and invest in 2022 prison boxes or go start chasing these cards down, whatever. A lot of them have already been pulled. I know there's a number of trackers out there, but like you can see just how much impact is going to have this sale will have over the next week. Like we're going to have a pretty clear precedent set very quickly here. And I'm really excited to see how it shakes out. So stay tuned to this channel, like, and subscribe. If you like, kind of the videos that are being put out here. We're doing a lot of discussion on stuff like that. There's a lot of discussion coming up around the National Sports Cards Convention, which I think now become even more interesting because of the amount of attention. Maybe we see more wrestling at some of those tables. Maybe we see more wrestling focused at Panini's booth. Like you never know what could happen as a result of this. We'll be covering it here on this channel. I know a lot of content yet to come. Stay tuned. Enjoy it wrestling cards enjoy the growth that we're seeing in this hobby and realize that you are part of something that is awesome thanks again guys we'll talk soon